Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. Good Tuesday morning to you. I'm Molly Hendrickson. And I'm Nicole Brady. Here's the latest from Denver 7. It is day two of the teacher strike at Denver Public Schools. As teachers return to the picket lines today, negotiations resume between the district and the teachers union. Denver 7's Micah Smith has a look at where talks stand right now. I'm at East High School where right around 7 a.m. teachers started to form their picket lines with signs in hand for day two of the Denver teacher strike. On Monday, Denver Public Schools reported about 2,600 teachers called out of work. But according to the Colorado Educators Association, about 3,700 educators participated in strike activities. They say the disparity in numbers could be because some teachers didn't necessarily call out but decided not to show up to work on Monday. Ahead today, for the first time since the strike started, teachers will meet with DPS to once again try to negotiate a compromise. That negotiation session is scheduled to be about 10 hours today. And of course, everybody is looking to see if it will be enough for Denver teachers to be back in the classroom on Wednesday. We'll have full coverage from beginning to end right here on Denver 7. Reporting from East High School, Micah Smith, Denver 7. And Denver 7 will stream today's negotiations on the DenverChannel.com and the Denver 7 Facebook page. If the district and the union come to an agreement, we will let you know right away with a push alert to your phone. All you have to do is download the free Denver 7 app. Tonight, we expect to learn which outside company will take over management of the Adams 14 School District. Right now, there are four finalists. The nearby Mapleton School District, District Renaissance Partners, MGT with the University of Virginia, and Schools Cubed. The district previously hired a company called beyond textbooks for help, but the new external management organization will do much more. The new EMO will certainly be empowered uh, to take much stronger actions throughout the district. You can learn more about each of the four finalists. The Adams 14 website has each group's response to a variety of community questions, and we have a link to those answers right now on our free Denver 7 app. Today, a second attempt at justice for Colorado State Trooper Cody Donahue, who was hit and killed investigating a crash on I-25. The second trial for truck driver Noe Gamez Ruiz begins today in Douglas County with jury selection. His first trial ended in a mistrial because of some witness testimony. Trooper Donahue was hit and killed along I-25 while investigating a crash in 2016. His death prompted the state to enact the move over law, which requires drivers to merge one lane over for emergency responders and tow truck drivers. It's back to the drawing board for leaders in Thornton after Larimer County commissioners unanimously rejected a plan for a pipeline to bring water to the city. Thornton purchased the rights to the water from the Poudre River north of Fort Collins and planned to build a 70 mile pipeline through Larimer County, but homeowners were concerned about the construction of the pipeline under their homes, delaying the vote several times. Now the company behind the pipeline is looking at its options, including potential legal action. Today, lawmakers at the state capitol will consider changes to Colorado's DU law, DUI laws when it comes to marijuana. Under current state laws, drivers with five or more nanograms of THC in their blood can be prosecuted for driving under the influence. House Bill 1146 adds a new traffic offense called tandem DUI per se. That would eliminate the five nanograms threshold and would allow officers to make an arrest when they have evidence to believe a driver has consumed alcohol or drugs, is incapable of safely driving, or has any measurable amount of drugs in their system. One of the bill's sponsors says the five nanograms threshold is bad science. The challenge truly really is that it's bad science. No one can prove that every single person who has five nanograms in their blood is therefore impaired. The group Colorado Normal opposes the bill, saying it could cause people to lose their jobs, their children, and their livelihoods. A tentative agreement between Democratic and Republican negotiators could prevent a second government shutdown if President Trump is willing to agree to it. Sources tell ABC News the deal includes the same $1.4 billion Democrats initially offered for enhancements to existing border barriers, along with $1.7 billion in funding for Homeland Security, earmarked for 40,000 new 
beds for undocumented immigrants, additional customs officers, and more technology at ports of entry. But no funding for President Trump's border wall. The agreement still has to be approved by Congress and signed by the president before it takes effect. Right now, it's not clear if the president is willing to agree to those terms. Let's get an update on your first alert forecast now. Here's Lisa. And we're in for a pretty day. Take a look at Loveland Ski Area this morning. A lot of sunshine. We've got dry conditions across the state today. The mountains are going to pick up more snow starting tomorrow afternoon, but we've got a nice little 24-hour break. This morning, teens and 20s early on. We're going to be in the low to mid 40s by 12 by lunch. And then this afternoon, upper 40s, close to 50. A little cooler up near Fort Collins in Greeley, but pretty mild right across the Denver metro area. A few degrees above normal. Early tomorrow morning, it's upper 20s to near freezing on Wednesday. And then by tomorrow afternoon, mid to upper 50s. There's that mountain snow, though. It develops tomorrow afternoon, and we're going to see it off and on for the next few days as we head into the holiday weekend. Here in town tomorrow, it's warmer, mid to upper 50s on Wednesday. Valentine's Day looks pretty good. We'll see an increase in some high cloud cover and then really a better chance for some snow Saturday and Sunday. It's going to get a lot colder, too. You guys, 30s on Saturday. 20s on Sunday, and right now it looks like we could see at least a few inches of snow this weekend. Mm. A popular piece of Japanese culture is visiting Colorado this week to promote the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. This is Kumamon, the red-cheeked round bear, is extremely popular in Japan. He's in Denver for the next three days visiting Children's Hospital, various businesses, and the Olympic Training Center. In fact, Kumamon is so popular in Japan, he is featured on his own mm. Kit Kat flavor, sweet potato and red bean paste flavored Kit Kats. The jury's still out on, on these. It's, <laughs> it's unique. It definitely. is unique. All right. <laughs> this has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thanks for joining us. Check back here later tonight for another update and download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. Have a great day.